Hello chess friends and welcome to the Zadov's chess channel and welcome to our basics in chess series. So in this series we're following opening principles, middle game strategies and the end game strategies. Today we're continuing with our middle game strategies and today we're continuing with our bishop and uh, knight and pawn strategy which I've created on my YouTube chess channel. So it's a separate playlist that I uh, created because uh, I have been asked now many times this question. When should I trade off maybe a knight for a bishop? When should I trade a bishop for a knight? When should I go into a two knights endgame? When should I go into a bishop's endgame? So in this series we are trying to solve all of these positional problems of trading pieces. And today we continue uh, again with another exercise. And uh, we have so far analyzed two videos. So in order to get a better understanding of this particular video, please check out my uh, Bishop, Knight and Pawn strategy on my YouTube chess channel in order to get a better understanding of this particular video. So we're continuing now with an exercise in which I'll ask you some questions. Should I take this one? Should I take this one? Should I go into a Bishop endgame? Should I go into a Knight endgame? Because in this series, we're trying to ev evaluate the position and evaluate the potential trades of pieces. So here is the position. Uh, it's a game played by Maria Fominik against Tichia, uh, Tichia Gara. And uh, it's a feed the master level game, uh, but I think it's really an instructive game. We can not always analyze some grandmaster games. This is really a great example how to play maybe with a bishop pair against a knight and a bishop. Here it's a critical position already, it's a dynamic position and uh, the knight is hanging, the queens can be traded off in the game. Uh, um, white tried queen takes d8 and after uh, rook takes d8 we have now bishop takes b7. Here's my question, uh, the first question, uh, here you should pause the video. Uh, what should black do here? Should black uh, take the bishop on b7? Or should uh, uh, black retreat maybe with a knight or maybe trying something like a knight to d7 and uh, counterattack here uh, the pawn on e5. So that's my first question. So this is, as I said, our first exercise. You should uh, try to solve these positional problems. In the game, black tried uh, the move knight to d7. So it's a mistake because uh, now there is a, a certain problem of this position. Okay, white can retreat, of course, with the uh, with the move bishop to g2. But here, white tried, of course, bishop to g5, the uh, first the attacking move. But the problem now of this position is that white is going into a favorable endgame, sort of. Uh, white is continuing the game with the bishop pair, and when to go into an endgame with the bishop pair? First of all, you should realize that pawns are on both sides. So we have now pawns on the queen side, pawns on the king side. So. When you have that uh, kind of positions, you should go with your bishops into the game. Because if the pawns would have been only on one side, then it's okay to have the knight. Because uh, no structural changes are so possible. No um, no attacking possibilities. The position gets sometimes too symmetrical. You cannot do something. And here in the game, uh, white uh, black right pardon me, rook to f8 and allowed now uh, white to retreat with the move uh, bishop to g2. After knight takes e5, okay, uh, black gained the pawn back, but that's not the problem. We have now really a good position for the bishops. Maybe this bishop is not so active as it's not uh, aiming into something yet. It doesn't create um, attacking possibilities, but this end game now you should take uh, slowly, take it carefully, uh, not rushing into position. What we want to do here in this types of position is to create an asymmetrical uh, pawn structure. So, so far the pawn structure is symmetrical. It means uh, it's not an, of, of course, this um, this absolute uh, symmetrical position, but what, should, what you should notice here that we have three pawns on the queen side and four pawns on the king side. So that's, my, that's what I mean about this symmetrical pawn structure. So it means we have the uh, same pawn count on both sides. So let's go back uh, in this position after the move uh, queen takes d8 and rook takes d8 um, after bishop takes b7 black should have simply take uh, rook takes b7 maybe black was scared a little bit about this move bishop to g5 but h6 is a possibility after something like uh, here uh, e takes f6 we can simply take the bishop and here the problem is that uh, white cannot take this bishop because then rook to d1 solves all of the position problems for black. We can take this pawn whenever you like and now you see we have occupied the second ranked one of these pawns will be lost and black has a good continuation. So you see how 
sometimes we miss these ideas uh, after the move bishop to b7 uh, the continuation was of course as i said here bishop to g2 and now after knight to uh, e5 we have now an end game a bishop uh, bishop pair end game versus a bishop and a knight let's see now how white handled the position it's really an instructive chess game you should uh, continue here to watch so here rook to d1 of course first of all occupying the open file so uh, h6 we have bishop to c1 this bishop stays uh, on this very active diagonal but we haven't lost a rook connection which is the most important thing we can still compete on the d file in the game rook to d8 we have f4 one of the main ideas is to restrict the knight's ability to play so we, uh, we should always evaluate where this knight can jump the main idea the first idea is to restrict the knight's ability to play so here after the move f4 we have uh knight to c4 rook to d3 a very nice move because after a potential rook takes d3 we have the opportunity to play e takes d3 and that's what i meant we would create then an asymmetrical pawn structure so that's how we should evaluate this uh, position that's how we should really create a nice attacking possibility so here in the game rook takes d3 anyway played but now after e takes d3 we get another tempo on the knight knight to d6 and now bishop to uh, c6 we should uh, always first of all activate our pieces the move bishop to c6 creates a very nice positional idea because it doesn't allow here black to play the move c5 because what black wants to do now if we don't play maybe the move bishop to c6 is to block the position when you playing with the knight uh maybe uh, with the knight and the bishop against the bishop here you want to create a really a static position a static position means that we don't want to have so many possible pawn moves so that's why this move bishop to c6 creates a very nice blockade so far because black would probably love to play something like uh, c5 and never allow uh, white to advance the pawn uh, here on uh, d4 what white shouldn't all also uh, do in this particular position is to allow some positional trades of pieces so it means uh white shouldn't allow in this position for instance a trades of uh of, of trades of darts for bishops because then we go maybe into a more simplified line uh with the bishop versus knight and i'm not sure how to win this game so the power of the bishop here is the most important to keep that uh, bishops on the board what you should also do is to risk maybe an um, opposite colored bishop's endgame in which you continue maybe with the light square bishop and your opponent is continuing the game with the dark square bishop then i'm sure the game will end in a draw so we need to win this game so that's why trading of pieces is not an option here for white we should keep the bishops on the board and continue the attack here in the game bishop to c6 very very nice move by white it's a great great positional move a knight to uh, f5 here again we are searching how to restrict this knight's ability to play in the game d4 so again you see this knight cannot participate in the game maybe again knight to d6 knight to c4 but this knight can again be kicked away with the potential b3 so first as i said restricting the knight's ability knight to e7 bishop to e4 again restriction idea we're not allowing this knight to come actively into the game in the game rook to d8 bishop to e3 we have bishop to d5 bishop to f2 we have king to f8 rook to e1 uh, knight to f6 and now again this restriction idea we place always our bishop uh in this opposite uh, opposite position in which we are not allowing this knight to jump on these two active squares uh, here after the move bishop to f3 we have h5 you see how black is desperately trying to block the position he's trying to keep the position compact but uh, what white wants to do is to create some dynamics then if the position gets dynamic then the bishop pair is perfectly fine king to g2 we have knight to d5 your black hopes really for a draw just trying to do some perpetuals we have bishop to e4 knight to f6 and now bishop to c2 we will need another diagonal for a bishop knight to d5 king to f3 we have to play actively with our king uh, rook to d7 and now h3 very important move now also uh, here by white we want to he have a, comp uh, um, a flexible position so it means we are trying to crack the position somehow we have still a four versus three situation maybe here on the queen side that's probably our side where we are making some kind of a dynamic but here so far h3 perfectly fine with preparations to play the move g4 here uh, knight to f6 we have g4 uh, rook to d8 and again you see how 
black doesn't want to react here if you take uh, g takes h5 then knight takes h5 will happen and uh, that's uh, what you shouldn't do because then you have splitted some pawns you have isolated pawns uh, black has managed to block the position so so far uh, we should really keep the position like this keep a dynamic uh, pawn structure on the king side so in the game bishop to uh, h4 including now this other bishop into the game uh, we have rook to d7 rook to e2 you see white needs to take this end game slowly not rushing into position which have h takes g4 we have h takes g4 and now uh, uh, we have c6 now f5 again a move which opens the position for the bishop so uh, here after uh, e takes f5 e takes uh, g takes f5 g takes f5 bishop takes f5 and you see now how white activated the bishops still with possibilities to create somehow here a pass pawn situation again you may think this is a simplified position white uh has created a new position in which black has a pass pawn but that's what's really our goal that was really our main idea of this end game to create an asymmetrical as i said pawn structure in order to create maybe somehow here on the queen side a pass pawn situation black has a pass pawn but i'm not seeing a good way how black should make progress immediately with that pawn here a rook to d5 we have a rook to uh, e5 again creating some dynamics after trades of rooks you see we have again a pawn that is rolling and now the king comes very very active into the game we have now possibilities to play bishop to d7 bishop to d8 the bishops will come behind the pawns and will attack them so so far great endgame technique here by white so uh, we have f6 uh, bishop to uh, d7 after um, f takes e5 we have now bishop takes c6 again a similar position uh, in which we have now a three versus two situation again we will create some cow somehow a pass pawn situation this pawn is blocked out so so far no attacking possibilities uh, here for black so uh, in the game knight to d6 was played we have king to d5 knight to c8 and now king to e6 you see how this king marched towards the center restricts really this king's ability to play the bishop is out of game now our main goal is to play bishop to d8 and bishop to b7 in the game knight, uh, bishop to h6 was played bishop to d7 attacking the knight the knight doesn't have good squares knight to a7 and again in the beginning of the video uh, if you remember i said that we should play on this restriction idea in uh, placing our bishop into this opposite uh, side position in which we are again restricting this knight's ability to play and now the bishop to d8 is basically unpreventable in the game uh, king to e5 we have bishop to uh, bishop to c1 but b3 here bishop to b2 here black probably hoped for a draw but now after king to uh, king to e6 uh, we have bishop takes c3 but now bishop takes uh, bishop to f2 b5 and after a takes b5 in this position uh, black resigned because there is now the clear path of this pawn uh, the bishop cannot go back and support uh, this potential uh, b8 here on b8 white will promote of course the queen the knight is trapped so it's game over in this position as i said black resigned so if you don't react uh, white will simply take this pawn then will march with the king uh, will take then after this pawn so it's again game over here for white so i hope you realize this was i believe a really instructive chess game how to handle this pawn structures uh i believe that black made the mistake didn't take uh, here as i said rook takes b7 much much better we would create a simplified the variation in which uh, maybe we would have a rook uh rook and pawn ending and the rook and pawn endings if you have the pain, uh, same pawn count are most of the times drawish games so here uh black allowed uh white to retreat with the bishop here bishop to g2 and now we have a perfect perfect end game uh, for the bishop because as i said we we have uh pawns on both sides so the pawn structure so far was symmetrical but uh white created some dynamics and played really really destructive end game so i hope that you enjoy these videos and i hope that you realize these ideas if you want to see uh more of our bishop knight and pawn strategy here's the link check out uh, my so far analyzed videos in which i really try to help you out how to uh, evaluate the strength of your knight evaluate your strength of the bishop in potential middle games and end games this is really important because um as i said also in the, in the introduction video um the queens and the rooks are not so important when you create strategies in chess 
the knights bishops and pawns you should always watch you should always watch how uh these pieces can come into the game and uh, this will be i think one of the most instructive chess series uh, on my youtube chess channel and we'll have also some fun and uh, this was i think as i said a great great example of this uh, of this dynamic so okay uh, i hope that you enjoyed this video as i said uh, and uh, i hope that you realize these ideas meanwhile you can watch my other so far analyzed um, um, uh, strategies from this uh, very nice series and you can also watch my basics in chess series in which i show you showed you m more than 150 videos about opening principles middle game strategies and end game strategies here's the link and you can also subscribe to my channel if you like this content see you soon with some more videos and uh, chess is the best of course